Hello you guys, my name is Ebony and of course this is Ebony Living My Best Life Unapologetically Happy and my channel is dedicated to guiding those in search of meaning, truth, and light. I do have my cards out so I'm going to go ahead and do a, a channeled ancestor reading for the astrological sign of Sagittarius. Even if you're not a Sagittarius, this reading will most likely apply to you. So um, as I shuffle the cards, I wanted to, of course, number one, let you guys know if you hear it banging, it's just because the cards and I got to... Um, this is not like a solid surface, but I'll try to min minimize that. But also I wanted to start off with the Bible verse of the day. And the day's Bible verse is um, John 1. And it says, the next day John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And so I thought about that today because, you know, a lot of people think about sin in such a high level regard, like, oh, demons and devils and all that kind of stuff. But sin is something just as, it can be something as simple as putting someone above yourself because the Bible says that you're not supposed to put any other God above you. And if you really think about it um, and you read the words for what they're really worth, it, the Bible is um, letting you know that the kingdom of God resides within you. You're created in the image of God. So you are a piece of God. And so you putting someone above you and you loving someone more than you love yourself is you putting another God before you, especially when it comes down to love and relationships. Like I talk to a lot of people who are like disillusioned by that. They don't know because they think that it's okay to like extend their energy out when it comes down to love. They think it's okay to like put somebody above them in love relationships. And so they're always chasing after this person instead of like just really pouring and leaning back into themselves. Because if that person really loved you and they loved you the way that they love God, then they would they would acknowledge who you are for who you are in at your core essence and your core being. And so that's how I feel when it comes down to love relationships, especially when it comes down to stable, equally balanced love relationships. Don't go out there putting nobody else above the God of your life. And again, you are the God of your own life. And, and I'll also say this, because to a certain degree, once you find that person that's on that same energetic frequency as you are, okay, so that means that they love themselves the same way that you love you, especially if you've done the work, and you know that this person is putting God above all else in their life, then you know that this person is God as well. So if, if, they're the, if, they're the, if they have the same God within them that you have within you, then in that instance, it's okay to put this person first because they're showing you that they are responsible with their own heart, number one, and they're showing you that they're responsible and they, they trust and love in God. And so that's how I feel about it. And, and here's the thing too, ladies, because a lot of us end up in these relationships with these men that, you know, because again, I, I just posted a video or you, by the time you guys see this, you'll have seen the video where I posted that I met the girl or I met one of the members of the Melanation cult with Alicio Bishop or a nature boy, Alicio niche, nature boy Bishop. And, you know, this person came out, per perpetrate themselves as God. He's the next Messiah. He said he's a, he's a Messiah. He, th he thinks he's Jesus. He calls him Elishio the Christ. That's what he calls himself. And so you think about that. And this is a person that is, number one, exploiting you, you sexually, you know, exploiting these women sexually and wanting them for their sexual prowess and what they can offer her for him as far as like sex is concerned. And so, again, if, if that's not what you even want for yourself, then why do you want to put that type of person above you? You know, God is love, but love does has, has love has nothing to do with sex and sex and, and um and actually having like a physical partnership with somebody. You can love somebody that you never met. You can love somebody that you never had sex with. You can love someone that you're not even romantically interested in. And so love is all things, but it's it has nothing to do with sex. That thing that he's perpetrating is a a sex cult. He's he initiated a bunch of sex slaves. And so, you know, there's a lot of broken people in this world. I, it's so funny because when I was younger, we'd bring friends over to the house all the time. And so people love coming to our house because our parents are really nice to them. I used to hate it though, because it was like, ooh, like why are you putting them people? Because when, when we brought people over and we had guests in our house, especially if they were little children, we knew to take a back seat to them kids because some people don't know what it really looks like to be loved. And so my grandpa was like the most loving person in the world. My grandma did the same thing too. But so when those people came around and they never had a love like that, they were like stuck. They were like stuck. And so we were, we were made to kind of like sit in the background and just kind of like allow these people to receive a love that they've never had before. And so a lot of people out there, I say that to say that a lot of people out there don't know what love really looks like because they've never had somebody in their life that loved them unconditionally. And that's real. A lot of people don't know what unconditional love is because the people in their life that were supposed to love them unconditionally betrayed their trust. 
And so when you see somebody like Alicia Bishop that comes out there claiming to be the Messiah, claiming to, to be all about love and God is love and he's God, then you're going to be, then these people are easily falling victim to this type of like maniac. Um, and so, yeah, so, and so that's the thing, you know, God is love, but God again is not out there. God is an asexual being. God is neither man nor woman. I personally believe that God is a woman, but I also at the same time can understand someone that believes that he's, a, that God is a man because God is all things to you. Okay. It's the universe. It's universal energy. It's all things because we're all created in the image of God. So if I'm a woman and you're a man, then of course God has to be both in that instance. And so that's why when I look at that, I say to myself, like these women out there are just kind of like falling victim to this because they, they desire this love of mostly like a father figure. Cause a lot of the people that went to his cult were African American women. There was one woman from Canada, which of course she's the one that blew the, blew the lid off his case because uh, of course she was white, but you know, whatever. But, um, and that's not to down it because she's white, but really to be realistic, the reason why he, people cracked down on him the way that they did is because a white girl got caught up in his cult down in Costa Rica, running around butt naked on the internet. And he's putting out like revenge porn and pornography, you know, cause there was videos of them having sex and orgies cause he's an ex stripper. But if you don't really have someone that loves you and that will lead you in the right direction, then someone like Alicia Bishop looks very entertaining and appealing to you because you don't, again, know what love really means. And when I saw that girl that I met, and again, I have a deeper video about this, I saw that in her. I was like, oh, that's that's unfortunate. And so, again, watch the video. I'll put it out. Um, I'll probably put it out after I put this out because it's like my daily, it's part of my daily vlog. So you guys can just click on that and watch it there. Um, and so anyways, you guys, let's pray. Let's pray together before we start this reading. So I want to thank Heavenly Father for bringing me this message, Jesus Christ. I don't care who you believe in, number one, y'all. But of course, God is the way, the truth, and the light. So you can't get to God into heaven except going through Jesus. I don't care if you just read the book like it's a Harry fucking Potter, bro. Like, start reading the Bible so that you learn your words, so that you know where you are going. Because if you don't know where you're going, you're going to go anywhere. You're going to fall for anything. But anyways, so... I pray that we have a very concise message that comes in from our ancestral realm in order to lead you guys in the right direction because I really get this really pervasive feeling in my heart that a lot of you guys, and when I'm talking to a lot of you guys, I mean y'all that are on this ascension journey, a lot of you guys have, a lot of you guys are turning the corners what God said, is what God is saying. So, Oh yeah, God. Um, I'm getting like this other. I'm getting like a visual of somebody here that's in a car, and at one point somebody else was driving the car, so you could have been in the back seat or even the passenger seat. And again, this person steering the wheel, and you know that your exit is coming up, but this person just keeps on barreling down the road because they want to go where they want to go, and they have no regard for where you are, wh where your life is taking you, or where your life was meant to take you. And so now you are in the driver's seat, and and now you, this person's still in the back seat with you, but now they're still trying to whisper you directions, like no, 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 like trying to lead you astray trying to tell you keep going straight don't turn off don't do this and don't do that and so I get this energy that a lot of you guys are needing to pray more again lean deeper into your words so that again when you get to this level in your life where you know you want to break free and ascend up to that heaven state can't nobody sway you parents lovers don't matter who it is Somebody out there also has a, somebody out there is pregnant. I get like a pregnancy and it feels like you could have twins, uh, two boys. And whoever you are, if it's just one person, if there's a couple of you that are out there, it's a very select message. I'm hearing don't take that cyanide pill. Don't take the cyanide pill. And when I say don't take the cyanide pill, I feel like some of you guys, you might find this out later on and you're, end up, you're pregnant with boys by an Alicia Bishop type, someone that probably led you astray and you're going to have found out the truth about this person. And maybe you're going to want to have an abortion or have like an abortion or have like a, uh, or miscarry or just whatever that is. And so I get the sense that this is something that's ordained by spirit. So if you decide to keep your children, cause it's always a choice, you have free will, then I feel like God will bless you. It's going to be a difficult journey, but God will bless you on the back end. Some of you guys, this ch child is, or these children are conceived through, I'm hearing like unscrup unscrupulous means. So this person could have also been married and kind of led you astray, but they wanted to keep you. And so they got you pregnant on purpose. So again, this person is leading you astray and trying to hold on to you. And so again, I feel like a lot of you guys out there, your person, the children that you're carrying will be a light for the rest of the world at the end of the day. 
you guys already know my personal story. I'll share it anyway real quick while I'm channeling this in. And it's that my daughter's dad did that to me. I was ended up, you know, I got pregnant on purpose from this person. And I had a choice between getting an abortion and my abortion would have been free or just having my baby. And I knew that it was going to be a really difficult journey because the emotions of being raped. Because, <laughs> again, someone that takes their condom off on you or gets you pregnant on purpose without your will and not, without your consent, that is considered rape legally. And so, um, you know, I, I ended up birthing my rape baby and loving her till... I mean, that girl changed me. She saved my life. And so I feel like a lot of you guys are in that crux of your journey where, of course, you've got a, you've got a choice. It does not matter your choice because there's no right or wrong when it comes down to spirit. But when it comes down to really fulfilling your purpose and walking towards your journey, ain't nothing better than really following the, the will of God. And I feel like the will of God over your life is to birth your children and bring them into the world. That's for a select few of you guys, again, but don't think that this is like a pro-life or you're going to hell because you had an abortion because baby hell ain't nothing but in your mind, bro. Like there's no such thing as going to hell. I mean, there is because if you stick yourself in a, like hell is described in the Bible as weeping and moaning and gnashing your teeth. That is simply depression. When you're depressed, you weep and you moan and you grit your teeth because gritting your teeth is gnashing your teeth. And so, you know, some of you guys are going to fall into a hell sort of sense of state because you're, you're feeling and guilty about something that isn't even your fault it's not those children's fault either and so again it's not to say that you're going to go to hell for having an abortion but it's to say that you potentially could fall victim to purgatory purgatory okay and purgatory is that in between hell where you're happy but you know that there's something holding you back because you feel guilty about something don't let something like that make you feel guilty whatever you choose because don't listen you know you could take my advice because that's the spirit has for you but for others of you guys out there do what makes you feel comfortable because this is your journey can't nobody write your story but you let me see I don't know why I feel like there's a lot of men that watch my channel now. I know I'm sexy, but there's a lot of men out there that's watching and they want uh, messages of truth, meaning, and light. It feels like black men. It feels like black men, or if it's not, if you're not actually African American, it feels like you could have been lower vibrational or raised in a way that was, there's a lot of darkness around you. And so if you feel like you're surrounded by the darkness, just know that, again, you can listen to my words. I'm going to preach to you in the way that spirit wants me to give you this message, but also at the same time, read the word for yourself, especially a man, a man that, a man that doesn't have knowledge, doesn't have anything. So if you are out there and you are looking to expand your, your base as a male and as a man, then learn your word. Read it once again like you're reading Harry Potter, bro. Don't don't think of this in terms of like, oh, I'm reading about fire and brimstone and if I don't do right, this is going to happen to me. Read about it in the sense that this is simply a story of an evolution and put yourself in Jesus' shoes because that is the reason for this book. That's the reason for the season. And so, and Jesus is the reason for the season, let's be real. And so when I think about that, that Bible passage that I read to you guys before, you know, John saw Jesus and said, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. But the purpose in reading the Bible is to read the words that, that Jesus are telling, is telling you guys. Because Jesus isn't saying something that's, that you can't achieve. Jesus is saying the way for you to go to heaven is to forgive yourself, love thy neighbor, love yourself, love thy enemy, and just do good in the world. If that's nothing. Like, you ain't got to be a psychic. You ain't got to be somebody out there reading tarot cards. You ain't got to be a preacher, a pastor, or nothing like that. Because most preachers and pastors, look at Alicia Bishop. You get what I'm trying to say. They trying to lead you astray because most men come in the image of God and say that they're the Messiah. And they're here to lead you astray. That's a Bible verse, Matthew 24, 5. And so... You think about that in sense of in this sense going forward at this place in your life right now, you know, your Jesus is meant to take away the sin of the world. He's meant to help you with your mental health. And Jesus, the Bible in Jesus is the New Testament is a mental health guide more than it's a biblical journey of this fantastical ascension that nobody but Jesus can have because you can't have it, bro. Like you really can. Like they talk about like Jesus taking bringing people back from the life. And this is for my man out there. If you're looking to breathe life back into your homies or your friends or whoever it is. Like Jesus breathed life into Lazarus, but he re he resuscitated Lazarus. And you got to be able to think about this outside of the box because can a man really bring back a stinking dead body from the from the grave? No, he can't. But he can bring back somebody that's festering and wallowing in this darkness and sadness and and lack of light. He's devoid of light. You can bring anybody back from the dead if that's the case, because the wages of all sin is death. And if you are sinful, then you are dead. And so some of you guys out there have friends in your life and they are dead. They're dead. Breathe life back into your homeboys. If they're out there not taking care of their kids, 
if they're out there not taking care of their woman, loving themselves, loving their parents, honoring their mother and father and doing right by the world, but you still love your friend enough to not let them go, then show them the right way. And you lead by example. Jesus wasn't out there. If you didn't want to do what Jesus wanted you to do or what you deserve to do, he wasn't going to go out there and put a gun to your head and make you do it. He wasn't out there trying to make you do it. It's simply... I'm here to show you the way, the truth, and the light. You follow me. You listen to what I got to say. If you believe it, then you believe it. If you don't, then you're going to go to hell. That's just what it is. But in the um, in Revelation, everyone ends up going to he into heaven in the end because everyone ascends because people begin to realize that heaven is right here. If you start your heaven journey right now, you will be in heaven right here, right now. So I say that. 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 If you guys need your own personal prayer, I'm telling you, hit me up, 602-549-4500. We can talk and I can do prayer for you over the phone and do your own personal prayer. Or you guys can text and I'll text you guys a prayer. But really, pray about it. Lean into what your own understanding really is trying to show you about the way the world is working, especially when it comes down to your own divinity. Um, and prayer is free. Of course, I do accept donations. Cash app, snarky black girl, girl with a U not with an I. You guys will see my picture up there anyway, so cash at me if you want to send a donation in any regard. Um, and let me see if there's anything else that wants to come out here. I'm covering my eye because there's a Bible passage. <laughs> I'm going to say the Bible passage anyway because there's this passage and I used to read it and I used to get on my nerves a little bit because it was like, what do you mean? Like pluck my eye out. But the it's I want to paraphrase it because I don't know the exact verse, but it's about if your if your right eye causes you to sin, it's better to pluck your eye out and throw it in the fire than to have your entire body go into the fire, go to hell because your right eye is just sinful as shit. So excuse my French. I know I'm talking about the Bible, but sometimes it comes out that way. But but that's but that's real though. You could pluck your eye out, throw it in the fire, and it's better to have your eye gone than to have your entire body thrown into this this fire and brimstone. And so again, some of you guys out there, this right eye. It could be your, your friends, it could be your family members, it could be your job, it could be anything. Some of you guys out there are putting money and money endeavors above your integrity, your emotional integrity, your financial integrity, your spiritual integrity. And that's just, that's, you guys are needing to be wary and be consciously aware of that at all times. Y'all see my wig on the back of the door swinging. Let me get it. Shut the door, sis. <laughs> and so, yeah, some of you guys are out there, and that's that's what's going on with you. And so again, you're not gonna you're gonna pluck your proverbial eye out. So if your if your eye is here and you're fixated on, because again, I mean, getting like pornography. Some of you guys are actually your eyes are fixated on pornography. And so, you know, por pornography is if you're constantly constantly excuse me if you're constantly sexually aroused. Sexual arousal stems from your Say your solar plex, no, not your solar plexus, your sacral chakra, and your sacral chakra, of course, houses your reproductive organs. But your sacral chakra is also that chakra that is uh, houses your creativity. And so, some of you guys are addicted to pornography because you are stifling a part of yourself that's creative, that's creative. And your your sacral chakra, as long as as well as your heart chakra, also houses your true personality. So, some of you guys are hiding who you really are from the world because at one point it probably wasn't safe to be who you. It wasn't safe to be yourself, and so. When you begin to hide yourself in the world, that's when you guys began to become addicted to this pornography. It, men or women, men and women both, because I mean, Pornhub is free. <laughs> I mean, I got, I had some some favorites highlighted once upon a time as well. But you know, I say that is sinful. I say that pornography is sin sinful, not because it's sexual, not because of the sex, because who ain't out there, who ain't out there getting jiggy and having sex and getting they fuck on for real though. No, everybody's doing it. Don't think that this is something, because again, sin is not something that, that these people and these wicked back, these backsliding like weirdo preachers are telling you. It's sinful to place pornography and sexual endeavors above your own self and above your heart because it stifles your creativity and your creativity is your God source energy. And so you're putting porn above of God because you're not allowing this creativity out. Some of y'all are poets. Some of y'all are just painters. I mean, it's not to say, but if you have a boiling and a rumbling in your sacral chakra and you're constantly horny and you constantly want to watch this, this imagery, it could very well mean that you have a creative ball within your energy and it's, it needs to come out and you stifling it by beating your meat and waxing that thing to a little bit of, to a little bit of BBW porn is 
a sin because you're putting that above this project that's meant to help change the world in some kind of way. And so turn your endeavors into your new porn. Let me see if there's anything else. That's for that's for that's specifically though that's for a man. I don't know why I get like there's a man out there. And of course, um, I identified as a man until I was 30. I'm not just saying that to say it. I identified as a male until I was like, really, till I was like 33. Until I had the the, the bottom knocked out that thing by somebody, and I was like, oh, I'm a woman because that's a man right there. That's a man. Um, it's real though, but um. Yeah, some of you guys out there though, like like lean on your lean on your own understanding when it comes down to the Bible, because you know he who falls for anything. If you just if you don't read for yourself, then you will be susceptible to falling for anything. And there are people that just want you want control of you because you know it's just control. It's just about control. But learn to control yourself. Learn to control yourself. So, anyways, let's jump into some cards real quick. Sagittarius, y'all always popping out in spirit because this card is actually the fourth one in, but spirit. Uh, get like led me to put this one out first and it's Sagittarius so Sagittarius you're coming directly right out of your reading here and it's because you guys have ended some kind of healing journey in your life probably walking away from what didn't serve you when it came down to like some of you guys it probably was a love relationship you guys are now starting to weigh out your options and you're starting to walk into your highest vibration once again um so you guys are really starting to recognize some of you guys are needing to speak your truth, but now when you, when you begin to speak your truth, that's when you guys are going to walk into this new, mm, I get it, I get it, I get it. Some of you guys are needing to heal this part of yourself where you might just speak without thinking and or you are kind of like um, someone who is, you have a voice, you got something to say to the people. And so you might be afraid to do it. So you might be afraid to do it or you might be sleeping on an opportunity to speak your truth when it comes down to something that you're very, very knowledgeable in. Some of you guys have a really strong knowledge base in just something, whether it be medical. Some of you guys are just really knowledgeable, really smart, really read, re really well-versed and really well-read. Father Sims is the temperance card, which means it's the highest vibration of Sagittarius. And the sun and eyes is the knight of swords. And so again, you've got this really strong message that you need to get out into the world, but you're stifling it because you're most likely afraid. Let's see why. I think you're stifling it because you're waiting for reinforcements. Spirit is saying reinforcements that will never come. And so you're kind of like missing out on this opportunity because you're waiting for somebody else to help you do something that you can just do for yourself. And then once you begin to do it for yourself, I feel like that's when spirit's going to bring you in some kind of like, ooh wee, some kind of wealth. Some kind of wealth and it's, they're going to help you out to balance out whatever this karma is in your life. Ooh, yeah. But that's why you guys are in the spiritual torment right now. If you guys feel spiritually tormented and feel like things are just going over and over and over again, it's because you're not listening to your intuition and you're not hearing what spirit is trying to show you and tell you about your next mission. Because your next mission is about building stability and faith in your, ooh, stability and faith is what I get. Stability and faith in the face of adversity. It's going to bring you guys a lot of good money into this situation, too. It's also going to be something that you can teach the rest of the world. It's something that you can teach the rest of your world. But this is what you're going. This is where you're headed to. But this is where you are right now. And so some of you guys, a big lesson of yours is to awaken your inner child in whatever way that that makes sense or whatever way that that helps you out. Um, ooh, that's a, that's a, these are the same two cards. So, again, this lesson is coming out back to back. You got, yep. The moment you learn your lesson is the moment that this person's going to come in because you you guys do have a Knight of Pentacles that's waiting to accompany your Daughter of Pentacles or your daughter your your Page of Pentacles, and so you have this Knight that's here that's waiting for you, but he's stuck right now until you open up your energy because this person is in some kind of way maybe watching you or watching over you in some kind of way, or the moment you activate yourself, this person's going to automatically see you and see your message or whatever this is, and that's what's going to awaken this love within them, and so you are Sagittarius, you are the leader of the zodiac. And you are the person that's going to awaken this love in this situation over with this person. Again, they are watching you, though. 
especially again if you're on YouTube and you're watching me then you're probably you probably have your own platform in some kind of way they are an energetic match oh we this person is an energetic match but they they're fiery they're probably really um a well-rounded individual they're very driven though and I got this energy of like king dingling bde energy big dick energy and so this person is definitely and I hate to say big dick energy because I know I just talked about the bible my goodness but you get what I'm trying to say it's bde and this person is like um they're BDE, but you hold, like if this person's your other half, and of course this person is their whole person and you were your own whole person, but right now you're just half of who you were, you're meant to be because you're not really speaking your truth, your truth, your, your 100% truth. And the moment you begin to speak your truth, you're, you're going to become this whole person that's going to gravitate and it's going to make this person and activate them into the whole side of who they, they're meant to be. Yeah. And so this person is kind of like, sleeping sleeping on you sleeping on this endeavor because they don't know where to go this person's kind of like stuck in some kind of way and it's not to say that okay but you guys are being activated your activation is going to activate this other person show is look at that the page of swords coming out the top of this other deck too this person's like watching you probably like kind of worried about things so they, i think this person feels like they'll never meet their other per their other half i think that's again why i feel like there's a lot of men watching me all of a sudden because not only am i fine <laughs> but i feel like a lot of you guys are like trying to figure out how to a lot of you men out there that are watching this are trying to figure out how to attract in your soulmate, but you don't have to attract her in. You don't have to try to do that. This person's going to naturally gravitate to you the moment you become yourself. And so this message is out here is for the men, for the fellas. And so this, uh, for, so fellas, like you guys have, you guys have to activate yourself and become that man that you're meant to become in order to attract in this woman, because a man should be a leader. A man should be the person that's going to, you know, uh, teach his woman something. If you can't teach, if you can't teach me something personally, I'm not going to even fool with you. I'm not going to mess with you. If I'm smarter than you, if I can out wrap you, nigga, if I can out trap you, nigga, I'm not going to fuck with you because you're not in your highest vibration. If I can outdo you, because a man should always be able to outdo his woman in some, in some regard, but if I can outdo you at everything, it's not right. And so you guys have to come into your, your greatest and your largest own in order to heal whatever happened in between the two of you guys. And something could have actually happened. You may have already known this person from a past life or already met them in some company. Y'all already met this person. And this is for all of y'all. Some of you guys already met this person. Maybe they were psychic. And again, ladies out there, apply this message to you if you're watching this, then your man, this is what your man is needing to do. Before you can walk back into this relationship, especially if you guys are in separation with somebody, you have to wait for this person to get into their own. And not wait for them because you don't ever wait for nobody. And the moment you walk on and you just go about the rest of your spiritual journey is the moment that's going to activate this person. Because you got to you gotta trigger this person. Ladies, never wait for a man. You always allow in what's meant for you because you are a recipient. But this person needs to kind of like up their ante or step their game up in some kind of way is what I get. To find victory. Yes, honey, somebody out there, y'all got a star on your hands. And this person's robbing themselves of their potential because they're probably impatient. They probably like to lie. <laughs> this person likes to lie. And they're probably really argumentative or just kind of like, um, I don't think they're argumentative. I think that they're hasty. And I think that they spoke too soon about something and they made a judgment call without really thinking things through. And so the three of baskets here says that there was once also a third party situation or this person is stuck between a rock and a hard place between you and a karmic or even between two different karmics and you're not even in the equation. And so this person is, again, trying to reel you in with these really kind of like negative mental tactics. And it really is showing that they're really weaker than what they are because it's the strength card in the reverse. They're weak or you're you're perceiving them as weak because that is weak shit. That's weak nigga shit, you know. And so you got this. Uh, you guys have a stable opportunity coming in. And so Sagittarius, whoever you are, if this sounds like your story and this is what your person had been doing, then just go for yours. Don't even worry about this person because either if it's not them, Spirit's going to bring somebody in that is ready to, to handle their business like a grown man or woman. And if it is them, you walking away is what's going to invoke this person into their, their highest, most... It's gonna make it's gonna make it's gonna make them see your true value, and it's gonna uh, kind of like activate them out of this brokenhearted energy, and they're gonna want to come in and, and really offer you what you deserve. But at the end of the day, I do get the sense that a lot of you guys are just needing to stop second guessing yourself and just allow what spirit has for you to come to you. So surrender is what I'm trying to say here, because the only way to get what spirit has for you is to surrender. And again. Going back to the pornography, um, I'm getting the, the, that pornography message again. And so you guys avoiding your own thoughts, your own energies, and you guys avoiding conf confronting that thing that's making you feel sexually explicit about all this other stuff, 
that's the thing that's blocking God and blocking spirit. And so you falling into sin by watching this porn is what's blocking, once again, God from coming into your life. You're putting another God above your God. And so the moment you stop doing that, and it's going to be uncomfortable. You're not going to know why your meat is going crazy and you can't seem to get your loins to stop buzzing and sizzling. But the moment you really start to meditate on your own messages is the moment that you're going to really begin to unblock yourself. So, you know, meditate, meditation, it makes your dreams come true too. And so start something new, try to pick up a new project, go out and, and um, volunteer in some kind of way, you know, heal that. Some of you guys have a broken relationship with your mother too, men and women, heal that broken relationship with your mama figure, your mother figure, because that's what's blocking your success. And that's how you guys are going to get to success. And that's how you guys are going to end this conflict. But this is uh, internal conflict internal conflict i want to say eternal conflict too so if it's eternal this is a generational curse that's probably followed you for a long time your family too and so you guys have the ability to defeat whatever this devil is but you got to be brave about it and so again come now that you're knowledgeable now you know that you don't have to do because the magician is someone who's playing tricks and he's trying to make something happen he's trying to uh, um he's trying to get you to believe in illusion and so if you can avoid and overcome this illusion by gaining knowledge again read that bible read your your word then that's how you guys are going to come out of this this rock in this hard place with this relationship and so let's see if there's any advice from spirit stand your ground some of you guys out there right now too especially if you're dealing with a karmic situation you're not able to stand your ground because they're they're in your way karma is in your way this is your karmic so your karmic is in your way what do you want let me see what they want you to do mm-hmm the only way for you guys to step into your highest vibration is to end the situation with the karmic. There's no, there's no right or wrong about it. Or there's, there is a right or wrong about it, but there's no, there's no way around it. Let me lotion up my hands for that one. Cause some of y'all don't want to hear it. So I'm gonna lotion up my hands while y'all absorb that message. <laughs> Cause I know some of y'all don't want to hear that. Cause some of y'all have a karmic in your life and it's cheaper to keep her and or it's just easier to let this person kind of run all over you. And again, I tell you all my stories. Watch that Legio Bishop story that I'm about to put out because I had a karmic friend in my life and it was easy just to kind of like go along with the flow. But the moment I began to put myself above this weirdo's energy, then that was the moment that I began to see like, this bitch don't even love herself. And if you don't love yourself, that means you don't love me. So you're trying to lead me astray and I'm not going to go astray for nobody because I put God above all else. I put me above all else. And so I told y'all with the Alicia Bishop thing, you guys will see that story. So watch that. But also... I tweeted on Twitter that this person was also trying to get me to drink. And I was teetotal at that time. Again, not for religious purposes, but I was teetotal because I just don't, you know, drink for what? For why? You're not going to knock this thing out the park. I'm not going to get no henny dick off you. So why am I drinking with you? And so you, you get what I'm trying to say. So I had to end up ending that relationship to jump into my highest power. Was it difficult that this bitch text me every weekend trying to take me out for drinks and stuff? Yes, of course she did. That's what people do. Did she text me trying to go to church? Of course she did, because that's what people try to do. But I just found a different church home. I started, you know, I started taking the long way home instead of walking the way that I normally, normally would walk. And it's difficult. Yes. It hurts. Yes. It takes bravery. Yes. Because at the end of the day, I'm putting myself back in isolation because I ain't, I got a friend. I don't have any friends, but Jesus. And if Jesus is in me, that means I ain't got nobody. I ain't got no friends with myself. So it's difficult to be that odd man out and be lonely because that's loneliness. But at the end of the day, it's better to be lonely than to be astray, be led astray. It's better to be, to pluck that eye out. Again, she was that eye. Had to pluck the big, the, 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 I don't want to call her out of her name and her weight class. That's not nice. But um, I had to pluck that out in order to get back into my highest vibration. And I say it's not nice because, I mean, it's funny, whatever. But it ain't worth it. I don't want to insult nobody, but it, especially for comedic effect. I get it. Calling someone a big back baboon or something like that would be kind of cute. But, girl, I don't, need to, I don't need them giggles just to kind of, like, let you guys know the extent of what I'm trying to tell you guys. You got to be you got to be willing to let go of whatever is leading you astray. If your right hand is leading you astray, baby, let that right hand go. If, again, with pornography, if your penis is leading you astray, pack that thing up for a little bit. Don't beat your meat every day. Because again, some of you guys are holding on to the past and the future is much brighter than your past could ever be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it is a karmic. There is a karmic here. The five of sticks is about somebody that's probably watching you glow up and grow and they're watching you speak your truth and they're looking at you and they're envious. They're talking about you behind your back. They're leading you, making you feel lonely or trying to lead you astray because you're in your highest vibration with the father of sticks, which again is a Leo Sagittarius or an Aries man or woman. So this is your highest vibration Sagittarius and it's leading you astray. 
or they're trying to lead you astray. I'm telling you, change your life and your dreams will come true. Change your life and your dreams will come true. Generational wealth with a with a wealthy man, sugar daddy energy. Don't gotta be a sugar daddy, but with honestly with a, a BDE, somebody that's gonna stick in your life and somebody that has their own money, and this person's gonna love you unconditionally. Mm hmm. Two of cups. Spirit is talking to y'all. Spirit is talking to y'all, Sagittarius. This is a Sagittarius card with the Seven of Swords. You're cheating yourself by not getting into your highest vibration because this person wants you. Y'all don't y'all don't realize what's going on here. I mean, you probably do, but I'm picking these cards right back to back right after the other, okay? I'm picking these cards up right back. The Ten of Pentacles is wealth that came out first. Wealthy man came out next. The love of your life came out next with this with this energetic energy of the Ace of Cups. Then the Two of Cups came out after that. So this is your soulmate. This is your energetic match. The Actually, this came out first. So you're robbing yourself, Sagittarius, because this is what who wants you. These cards are coming out right back to back to back to back. You're you're you have you have what it takes to let your ships come in. Stop, stop, just stop, stop and redirect. There's nothing wrong with redirecting, even if you got to redirect and do both. Because some of you guys, again, this tower moment is going to come in when you pick up two different wands. You guys are going to be equally balancing out two different energies and allowing it to work for you. And that's where your money is. That's what this new endeavor is, too. And that's when this person is going to come back into your life. Like, that's when this person is going to come back into your life. Till death do you part. The five of pentacles, of course, is about loss, but it's also about till death do us part through sickness and through health. Because the, the traditional rider weight uh, five of pentacles card is a card of these two people walking down a, a road. They're married. They're both sick, hobbling around, but they're not going to leave each other's side because they vowed not to ever leave each other's side. This is You're about to find your life partner. You're about to find your life partner. You know, again, walk away from what doesn't serve you. These people that are trying to lead you astray. I'm going to leave it at that. We're at 35 minutes. I'm going to leave it at that. Mostly because, again, like, you know, surgery. I'll do more on my surgery vlog, but whew, I just had surgery. And for those of you guys that are, like, tuning in and just barely seeing this message or whatever, um, I just had surgery, so I get kind of, like, winded easily at this point in time. Uh, Sagittarius, you guys are going through a transformation, so be be prepared for that. Um I'm gonna leave it at that. We'll talk about, we'll talk more. Maybe I'll do another reading today on something else and do, do it like a strictly like a love reading about this situation. So yeah, we'll follow up on this, on this love situation a little bit later. I'll talk to y'all later.